Good morning, Ignite Church. We're so happy for you guys to be here. Let me get a round of applause for everybody for being in the house. My name is Edric Valdez. I'm one of the serving leaders. And no, I'm not Pastor Eric. I know you guys know. I know I'm not a better looking version of him. He, it's hard to beat, but I am not Pastor Eric today. Uh, they asked me to step in today uh, to bring the message. And when God asks, we answer. Whether we want to or not. But we're here. We're moving forward. I'm excited. I know God's going to do great things this morning. Uh, especially that so 90s. Uh, some of the serving leaders will say that I'm the old man in the house. I don't think so. I don't look at the age over 25. Um, but they do. They call me the old man eventually out of the group most of the time. But anyway, yes, I was alive during the 90s. I think in 1990 I was 12. So it just gives you the age range. I was 12 in 1990. Yes, I know. Alex, thank you. Anyway, so I'm, I'm honored to be here. The 90s was a great decade. Uh, a lot of things uh, influenced the 90s. Uh, just to recap a little bit, uh, last week, Pastor Eric, he spoke about the importance of the word as a source of truth and how the influence of the 90s impacted people's belief systems due to the saturation of information, you know, music, internet, fashion, etc. But I asked God to speak to me today, and, you know, there's one, today we're going to talk about, we look at one, something that I think is the most influential phenomenon that was birthed in the 90s, and is still making a huge impact in society. So before we continue, I want you to check out this video, to check out a little bit of what I'm talking about. Ah, reality TV. Your sister's going to jail. Have a little compassion. We love it. We hate it. Wait, Thank you. We hate that we love it. I'm super confused. <laughs> and yet we watch it anyway. So embarrassing. So how did reality TV even become a thing? We're going to break it down in five minutes or less. So let's go back. Before Kendall and Kylie were even born to 1992, to this little show. I know what happened <laughs> when people stop being polite. And start getting real. The real world. <laughs> MTV decides, hey, let's have seven 20-something strangers live together in an apartment for three months and just see what happens. You can imagine how that went. The Real World was basically the first modern reality show. Sure, there were a few reality-esque shows that came before The Real World, but The Real World was the first time ordinary people were presented as themselves, not characters, and the story arcs were just their regular lives. All because the show's creators wanted to make a drama about young people without spending all the money on writers, sets, actors, and everything a regular scripted show would need. Besides the drama, MTV's little social experiment created some visibility people weren't getting in pop culture. In season three of The Real World, Pedro Zamora revealed he was HIV positive, which back in 1994 turned into a huge cultural moment and became even more devastating when Pedro died hours after the last episode of the season aired. So The Real World laid down the framework that totally changed the game, and then this show turned reality TV into a legitimate phenomenon. Travis spoken. A group of contestants isolated on an exotic remote island competing to be the last person standing and take home a million bucks. The season one finale got more than 50 million viewers, 5-0. The only thing that beat that that year was the Super Bowl. Survivor showed the big networks that reality TV wasn't just a gimmick for cable channels like MTV. It was, well, the real deal when it came to ratings gold. So of course everyone wanted in and we started watching real people on TV do stuff like getting locked in a house under constant surveillance, eating really weird things, racing around the world, singing, and of course, finding love. Can we please accept this route? Absolutely I will. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that the dude who created Survivor also created a bunch of other hit reality shows, including this one starring this guy. Might have heard of him. You're fired. So, why are we so obsessed with reality TV? Well, we talked to a media psychiatrist, Dr. Carol Lieberman, and she said it's because of a few different things. One, wish fulfillment. Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> You watch regular people go on shows like, say, American Idol and turn into giant superstars, and you get to vote to decide what happens. Two, relatability. Sure, reality can turn normal people into superstars, but it could also make famous people seem, well, a little more normal. Is this chicken what I have, or is this fish? I know it's tuna, but it, it says chicken by the sea. 
And three, viewers just can't get enough of the so bad it's goodness of it all. According to Dr. Lieberman, the main reason why people watch reality TV is to see other people in humiliating, awkward situations so that they can feel superior. The only thing that is fake about me. This. I knew I mean, reality is all about putting normal people in abnormal environments, custom made for maximum drama. Of course we can't look away, and that's the point. So all this talk about reality TV might remind you of this stuff. Hey, what's up guys? What's up guys? Hello friends. And welcome back to my YouTube channel. You can kind of see how a confessional from the real world in 1992 looks kind of like a vlog from today. Before reality TV, entertainment was really about fantasy and escape. Then when it became a thing, it kind of turned the camera back on the viewer and proved anyone could be famous and your everyday life could become a massive hit. So regardless of how you feel about this genre, it's made an impact and it's clearly not going anywhere. So thank you, reality TV, for this. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! This? Kim, okay, there's people that are dying. And for giving us a glimpse into people's lives like this. We love our little lives and we're having fun doing it. but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so that just gives you a glimpse of the 1990s overall and what was the biggest influence? Reality TV or reality. Is it fact or fiction? Let's take a closer look at these areas that have affected people's perception of reality in their lives. In the video, it talked about wish fulfillment. The definition of wish fulfillment is the satisfaction of a desire through an involuntary thought process. Wish fulfillment can occur in dreams or in daydreams, in the symptoms of neurosis or in the hallucinations of psychosis. Human nature is to wish fulfillment. You see a commercial on TV with a very expensive sports car and your mind automatically says, man, I wonder how I can obtain that. You see someone with some fashion clothes and you automatically assume, man, that's a good style. Maybe I can go ahead and that work out for me. You know, there's different areas that we look at that once we see, we kind of want to obtain. And that's natural human behavior. But you see, according to George Bernard Shaw, he says life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Now, you see, the idea that Shaw stated had merit. But I think what the reality is that life isn't about finding yourself or creating yourself. It's about finding and developing our relationship with Christ and his kingdom as we already have been created in his image. You see, there's a, there's a misconception that we have to create our lives. We have to make it what it is, and we're the ones that are going to be in control of that and responsible. But in reality, if we look at the Bible, God already has laid out the plans for our lives. God has already developed what you need to be. We just have to connect with him and let him guide us on our path. You see, we read the book of Genesis 26 through 30, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominance over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, over the cattle, and over all earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And God created man in his own image, in the image of God created him, male and female created he them. Verse 28 says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominance over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over everything living that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you here yielding, yielding the seed, and which is upon the face of all earths, and every tree in which it is the fruit of the street yielding seed, to you it shall be for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of heavens, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, when they're alive, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Now, if we look back at those verses, I want to point out something. God said that he created man in his own image four times in that group of verses. Not once, he said it four times, that we were created in his image. He also repeated, if you see those verses, 
that we had dominion over the earth. We had dominion over the animals, the birds, the trees, the land, the food. He repeated it several times. You see, God was making a point. He was telling us already. He was giving us a commandment. He already said that when he created us in his own image and he gave us dominance over everything in the land, that that was our inherited right because we were created by God in his likeness. Not physical likeness, but we were created in his likeness in mind and in spirit and in soul. Okay? So that wishful fulfillment, there's really no need to wish for fulfillment. If we believe in God and we build our relationship with God and we let God guide our path and allow God to be the one to determine that, all our needs will be met and we will never want for anything. Okay. Now, the second point, relatability. Relatability, able to be related to something else Enabling a person to feel that they can relate to someone or something. You see, reality television, which turned its eye on people who were doing nothing but being themselves, was the perfect expression of this trend of narcissism. Let's look at ourselves, it said. Aren't we fascinating? Now, I'm going to be honest. And by a show of hands, how many people here watch reality TV? Be honest. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Okay. Now, back in, like, like the, the, the video said, the real world was a big phenomenon for young people. That was pretty much the main show that catapulted into reality TV. And then you had your shows like Survivor, Amazing Ray, so on and so forth. And now we have Love Island, The Bachelor, Love is Blind, 90 Day Fiance. I mean, honestly, if I listed every reality TV show that is going on now, I would have 25 pages of notes. And that's not going to happen. Plus, I would run out of breath and need, you know, oxygen because of all the speaking I have to do in order to name all the shows. There are so many reality shows, we can't keep track. That's why they invent the DVR. Everybody records it. Everybody watches it because it is human nature to want to see other people suffer consequences. And it's sad to say, but it's true. Because if you watch other people suffering or having a hard time, then you forget about what you're going through in your life. So it's easier for humans to automatically watch other people make fools of themselves and go through consequences and through physical issues so that way you don't relate on you. You say, oh, man, I don't got it so bad because other people are suffering. You understand? And it's human nature. You know, you do. You want to see what's, oh, my God, you saw that fight? The Real Housewives of New York, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, the Real Housewives of Miami, and I don't know how many Real Housewives. These women literally get paid to sit around and argue, look, promote all the money they spend, and fight over pettiness. And we sit there and we watch. You know, there's other shows, Hip Hop Atlanta, Hip Hop Miami, I don't know what it's called. Love and Hip Hop. Okay, all that stuff. We love to watch people go through ordeals. And we can't wait till the following week to watch what's going to happen next. And I'm going to be honest, that happens. You know, you want, you're like, oh, my God. Did you see? And you talk about it with your friends. You go to work and you stand by the water cooler. You talk about it. Did you see that episode? Did you see her? No, she didn't. What's she wearing? What's going on? Did you see him? I can't believe he did that to her. We are huge, on, unfortunately, on gossip and on watching other people suffer consequences. But you see, in the book of Psalms 19 through 7 through 9, it says, The law of Jehovah is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of Jehovah is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of Jehovah are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of Jehovah is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Jehovah is clean, enduring forever. The ordinance of Jehovah are true and righteous altogether. It's basically telling us right there, if we, again, if we build a relationship with God and we rely on Jesus Christ to guide our path, his laws are clear, they're simple, and they're perfect. We don't have to worry about suffering. We don't have to worry about dealing with ordeals. We just follow God's guidance. There are going to be bumps in the road, but if we keep our eyes on God and the path that he has set before us, then we're going to be fine. We don't need to worry about our neighbors to the right or neighbors to the left. We continue moving our path. We do what God's word says. Preach the gospel. Let those know about him. Show love and kindness as he would, and then he will go ahead and guide his path. Because we're supposed to be the example. And let me tell you, I know it's hard. It's hard because we are human nature, and sometimes we lose it. My wife always tells me and gives me a hard time, 
I'm the worst example when it comes to driving a car when I get upset. Road rate, I have to literally, I, I talk to myself in the car. Because I can get a little hot when someone tries to cut me off or does something that's not right. And that's human nature, and that's your natural impulse. But you have to learn to control because you never know who's watching. My wife and I, just to give you a little story, my wife and I were in a, um, a, a car, hit us in the back, and I have my 18-month-old niece in the car. And normally, I got upset because, you know, yeah, the, 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 you know don't touch the niece. And the driver and I had some words, and we were stuck on the Palmetto, and my wife and I were joking, and basically says, oh, I'm going to end up on only in date. Because, you know, I, I was telling the gentleman that, you know, his driving wasn't the best. So, we almost, uh, you know, I, I would have ended up on there, but no. It was a joke, but, you know, I didn't really end up on it. But it's I'm saying because, you know, nowadays you go to social media, and all of a sudden, no matter who's on it, all of a sudden, they end up on only in date. And that's not a plug for them. It just happens to be the, the case scenario. But, you know... We have to be careful, and we have to set the right example, and we have to, it says relatability. We tend to look at people, and unfortunately, these reality TVs, they make people become idols. It makes people that shouldn't be famous, famous. It makes them idolized by people. People see them, and they want to be like them and do things they want to do, okay? Which it tells us, that's kind of, you look at it, it's kind of being like idolatry. Really shouldn't be worshiping or honoring things above God. You see, for example, Pastor Eric. Pastor Eric is our pastor. We admire Pastor Eric. We have admiration for him, for his integrity, because he's a true example of what hard work is. He's here every Sunday in and out, working hard, just alongside all the servant leaders. You know, he's not walking in at 1030 or 11. Okay, I'm ready to preach. I'm good. No, he every step of the way, matter of fact, he knows more about stuff that we do. We have to ask him for things. But that's an admirable trait, and that's someone that you want to admire. Because you truly see God through him and the example that he sets. But it's not idolization, you know. It's Pastor Eric, and then there's Eric, you know, the family member. There's Eric, our friend. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, you have all these people, and I'm not you know, going to name names, but you know who they are. They're popular on TV. Everybody wants to be them. They're multi-million dollar rich because people do, they, buy, they make a product, everybody buys it. They, you know, they do something, they, you know. Companies pay them just to plug their name of their company because everyone follows them and everybody wants to do what they want to do. And they really shouldn't be famous. Because if you look at how they became famous, maybe it wasn't the most moral or correct way that they did it. And that's human nature. And that's our fault for allowing those individuals to make A, to be famous and make a lot of money and have multiple homes and travel to multiple places. But yet we cannot get enough and we want to see what happens every week. And the last trait. It's so good, it's so bad. You see, Johnny Depp, he made a statement. It says, I'm attracted to the extreme light and the extreme dark. I'm interested in the human condition and what makes people tick. I'm interested in the things people try to hide. Now, if you know Johnny Depp and if you watch the news, he recently was in court dealing with a very, very unfortunate divorce, very public. So he basically took the words he stated and he now became the topic of his own statement, you know, because it was so bad, you just couldn't stop watching. You know, and, and don't, don't lie. You know you all wanted to know what happened and what they said every day, what was going on in court. So anyway, it says, humans by nature are drawn to misery of others. They are interested in other realities, whether it is good or bad, to escape their own. The truth about reality TV is something far different as compared to what may be seen. Snippets from the grapevine reveal a different story. There are many other gimmicks that are used to capture the audience. It is believed that certain scenes are staged and rehearsed and presented as reality for their viewers after editing. So what is reality behind these shows? You see, you think they call it reality TV, but in reality, they're edited and they're made a certain way to feed the human perception. They only let you see what you what part of it. They don't say you see the whole segment. They say you see the part that makes somebody mad, and then that's what ensues the arguments. So in a way, the producers take all this information, they edit it, they feed it to the people on the shows to allow and control the reaction they're going to have, whether they're going to get upset or they're going to be happy or sad or elated, whatever. They control human emotion. And in turn, we, the viewers fall into that trap. 
You see, in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 33 through 38, it says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. Ye the offspring of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The good man out of his good treasure bringeth forth good eatings, and the evil man out of his evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. And I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we would see a sign from thee. You see, there, they're saying clearly that our actions have consequences. Okay? It says that the tree can either produce good fruit or it can produce bad fruit. It's about what your heart, the condition of your heart, and what you speaketh. Because at the end of the day, you may get away with it now, but... When the time comes, you have to justify your actions to the Almighty. And people see what you do every day. You are a prime example because like God said, man is made in his own image. And if you claim to be a Christian or you claim to be a person of faith or have a relationship with God and you do things that aren't in honoring God, people see that. Because if you look at reality TV today and they bring in religious beliefs or religious entities Sometimes they're misconstrued, they're made to look a certain way, and therefore it not only is not, is not promoting the kingdom of God, it's actually damaging the kingdom of God. So getting the kingdom, you know, social media, you know, internet, all those things are great avenues to promote the kingdom, but to a certain extent you have to be careful how it's promoted and how it's seen, because one misstep could set it back. All the work you did could set it back tenfold. Cultivate a positive mental attitude. Your attitude influences your perceptions. And your perceptions influence your decisions. And your decisions influence your reality. At the end of the day, we should make the word of God and our relationship with him the reality which influences our everyday lives. It's up to you. If you have a positive attitude and outlook, then you will have a better outcome. If you have a negative mental outlook, then you yourself are putting your own pressure on yourself. Christ says, look to me for guidance and understanding, and I will guide your path. So as I go ahead and start to close... Rate three things. Wish of fulfillment. Look to God for that fulfillment. If you want to be relatable, Jesus Christ should be the one you relate to. It's so good, so bad. If you follow God in his order, it will be good all the time, even in the bad. But if you don't, it could be bad all the time. So today, as I close... I want to extend, those that are present here today and those that are online, I want to extend the opportunity that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you don't have that relationship with him today, I want to go ahead and extend the opportunity to you today by repeating this prayer. So those that are in the house, please join me in this prayer. And those that are home, you know, close your eyes, extend your hands, and repeat these words. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today. Lord, and I ask for your son, Jesus Christ, to become my reality, to make it my, my everyday, Father. Lord, I want your son who died on the cross to pay for my sins, to come, become part of my everyday life, to fill me, to fill my spirit, Father. Lord, I want Jesus Christ to be my wish fulfillment. I want to be relatable to him in your word. And I want it so good all the time, Lord. And I want to eliminate the bad. Lord, I pray to you today and I ask your son Jesus Christ to come into my heart because he paid for my sins. 
so that I know that I will have now relationship with him and with you, the Father, that one day soon, Lord, I will be reunited with you in heaven to live that glorious life, Father. Lord, I ask you today, in your name, Jesus Christ, amen. I want to go ahead and close in prayer. And then from closing prayer, we'll go ahead and dismiss. And I want you guys to have a blessed week. If anything today, remember those three points that we discussed. That you have your reality. Won't be reality TV. But it'll be a reality through God's word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the words that were spoken today, Father Lord. I pray, Lord, that the words that you gave, Father Lord, will resonate in our spirits, Father Lord. That we'll be able to just just process them father lord through the week father lord and just understand lord and go to your word for clear and understanding lord and if we may be going through any situation right now father lord that we look to you father lord for ultimate understanding father lord that you take control lord and you'll solve this problem father lord for those that are feeling sick and have an ailment lord we declare healing upon their lives father lord lord that use that as an example as a testimony father lord that they can come next week lord if they have a testimony and share of the glorious works that you did father lord lord as we continue to move forward, Father, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that next week as we continue with session three, Father, Lord, that's so 90s, Father, Lord, that your word will continue to be revealed to us, Father, Lord, and that will bless us every day, Father. It's your name I pray. Amen. I want to thank you for coming out. Hope you guys enjoyed the word today. We know God spoke, and we'll see you all next week. God bless.